Hi all, hope you're doing well. It's probably worth just reminding ourselves how the market works. It's a sentimentally driven uh, market, anything that you're trading. It's to do with the cycles of fear and greed. And, and when the retail guys will go one particular way, uh, what should happen is that there'll be someone to counter that trade. If uh, 100 million retail traders decide to buy, uh, it's possibly going to be a case where there's going to be a big entity that's going to have to take that trade and they're going to have to sell. Now the thing is with um, this, I'll show you the indices that we're falling, uh, but we're not really, they're not really in denial, all right? So they carry on, they're carrying on holding onto their longs. So what they need to be doing is uh, really thinking about reassessing their longs and uh, we might need like a news event just to cement that fear because price action isn't really getting them out, even though we're falling. So it looks like they're holding on, hoping that we're gonna pump higher, but I think they'll need like a um, news driver. What's of note, if you see these on the internet, we have to like, take a contrarian view of it. So what happens is that the retail guys are bearish as price comes up and then they go long at the highs okay so where it's green it should be red for us because we're contrarians and when they decide to buy like uh, um, was mentioned in discord but they decided to buy at the top we're gonna fall down and uh, that's just a cycle so I'm not sure where we are right now I think we're in denial because they're not getting out of the casino they're holding on to their longs we are slightly supported on the S&P but we broke support on the Dow Jones and uh, DAX are going long, all right? So they're in a state of denial. So they're gonna have to get crushed. And then when we get down to here, we'll see that reflected on our risk calculation uh, on here, right? So um, remember that we are risk on the big picture. There's eight people trying to short the market, but we're seeing a change in the 24 hour change, okay? And uh, if they continue to go long, this number is gonna get greater and then that number will get smaller. It'll get closer to zero. If we go into positive territory, then we're going to we'll, we'll, uh, very likely puke on risk, okay? Like we always do on our risk calculation. When we go positive, uh, it means that the herd are net long and the down money are net long. And there's um, uh, something like 40 million retail traders out there in the world. And uh, so they've got some quite a lot of capital some of these accounts and if they all go one particular way there's going to be an entity to take those other trade so we need to keep an eye on this i did say i was going to be off monday but i'm going to just do the uh, risk calc and then i'll take the rest of the day off because we need to see this develop over time this is a really important metric uh, so that being said let's look at the scores and we saw some flight to safety and uh, some dumping of the scores so nu took a big dump look at the price percentage change au also moved as well look at the price percentage and uh, the uh, ga rose and uh, dollar swiss rose and, and pound kiwi they're, they're interesting because they're risk off sensitive so um, the fact that they increased in points tells us that we did go a little bit risk off over asia Euro USD lost five points. We were all up here. We were all the way up here yesterday, and uh, they decided to uh, buy, which we can see we've gone ten percent long, and um, because of that, we're we're falling, right? So um, it was a good lesson this week is that we did pump on the Euro USD, and it's just to know when to take profits, and uh, it just coincided the round number seventy pips. Uh, you know, we were 70 pips higher up yesterday than where we are now. It would have fallen quite a bit. And uh, it was maybe a good TP at 1.1, the round number. In hindsight, I did from wisdom, personally, I did take profit there. But we were trying to forecast a bit higher. But just uh, it's annoying that this, the herd had decided to buy. <laughs> so um, that's, that's okay. We're a little bit risk off on our scores. But we're probably going to see a turnaround by the close, which would be typical. And frustrating but that's just the way it is we normally we tend to rally as we go into the close on the US market uh, I'll show you the robot and uh, we've got a lot less trades and the new directional logic is working fine uh, last few days have been up quite nicely 
and uh, what we'll do is just continue as we are, no changes whatsoever, and then we'll report the profit and loss with this new um, with this new directional logic for testing code for retracement. So that's got the directional logic using the sentiment and the retracement aspect. So it's quite clever, quite sophisticated, and it's going quite well. And um, so no changes here. We don't need to make any changes. And then once we've got some solid gains, then we can start reporting the profit and loss. But there's no point reporting the profit and loss because we were still developing the uh, system and we didn't have any directional logic and we really um, needed it <laughs> and we have it now. So that's that. So that's going fine. Uh, last two days, £40, which is okay. And it's good that it's not actually triggering many trades as well. So we can look to increase sizes potentially too. Uh, and let's have a look at your indices. So I was saying about the fear and greed. So they'd, they decide to buy at the top and uh, breaking support. You'd think that would probably be enough to scare them, but no, they've gone long. They continue to go long. So they're not allowing price action to, price action to phase them. So they might need like an emotional driver where they're going to have to reassess their positions and think, oh, why was I long? Maybe I should sell. Yeah, perhaps if I sell it, that's going to be a good thing because surely we'll continue to go further down. So I think what I need to do is sell it. This is then thinking, but then en masse times 100 million people. And if they all think the same thing, then there's going to be, they're going to sell it and then there'll have to be someone to counter that trade and it will pump. Okay. So it looks like they're sort of thinking about it, they're teetering right now. I'm thinking, oh, maybe I need to get out. Maybe I should close my positions. Maybe I should start selling it. And there's all this uncertainty and fear and worry. And uh, we should, that should be enough to make them change their mind. That break, break of this support should. I mean, I assume they're looking at technicals. They're looking at their chart. And they're most likely looking at the hourly timeframes. This is why we look at the hourly. Because that's the very common uh, time frame for the retail guys that's like the default of that trader for and uh they will probably just stuck to that time frame so if we're using that time frame too we can see what they're seeing all right so that's quite a clever little thing that we do in the qdb service so um you know you'd think that would flush them out but they're going long so we might need a scary news event i'm not sure what they would have maybe some russia thing maybe chinese i'm not sure but there have to be something to make them reassess their positions. Uh, S and P has some support uh, here, but they're going long. We're making a risky sell, so uh, three, four, five, seven level there. So you need the eyes on that. And you can see we've got supports from that low. Right, and the reason for it is that they've sold it. So they come up and they start to go long in a short space of time. To be honest with you. Yeah, it's like less than 24 hours we had a big switch. <laughs> it's really, really, really difficult. So if you're trading a risky, sensitive pair like the Aussie, the Aussie is going to pump on that and it's going to dump. And it's sending a lot of mixed signals in the space of a very short space of time. So you could have got caught out. So you need to know where to exit and you could probably just maybe think about scalping on FX. I don't know if we can really swing trade. But that's just an example how you could have got caught out. And I remember I was long Aussie and I forgot to check the indices. And of course, this falling is going to impact the Australian dollar. <laughs> All right? And it just so coincided that the herd had started going long Aussie, as we saw in the bubble. And uh, we've seen price performance fall. And that's the correlation between the Aussie and uh, risk. So we can see DAX. And um, yeah, so this is something quite heavy, isn't it? And they're going long. We've made the sell, All right? So uh, this is going to be a box. We should be below fifteen eight three five, okay? Because I've gone long, they shouldn't be coming up to get paid. They have to get punished. Uh, so be careful. And then gold. And then um, nice long weekend for me because I've been so many hours recently. I think I could do with a little break and. Uh, so, you know, to get away from the screens. I'm going to develop my trading plan. I'm going to include a few, few things that I need to include, including uh, that fear and greed thing that I just showed you at the beginning and try and uh, use the risk out to know where we are. And we can get updates on a regular basis in Discord using our robot. 
you know, to tell us to breed in fear. Uh, so there's the buy um, on gold. So looking for longs above 1911 and uh, probably targets 1924, 1933, and this is going to be a resistance at 1944. Okay, so currently totally made a risky buy with a stop at 1911 potentially and then that could be it so i'll wrap up now remember i'm off monday i will do the risk calculation for monday and then i'll be back probably on tuesday and then um we can report back with the robot and we'll see how we go i'll speak to you guys later